I'm also I'm also a proud member of the Professional Association RGV chapter, and I will be introducing the first presenter along with another amazing member of the South Texas All Staff Conference Planning Committee. If you're watching the conference in a group setting, be sure to use the chat box and put the club's name and the names of all those present in the email address and their email address to send their certificates so that everyone gets credit for today's sessions. We are so excited that you're able to join us today. We had an awesome day yesterday. Our TPA chapter is in its 13th year of hosting this annual All Staff Conference. And even though you can't, we can't be physically together, it is our hope that this virtual conference will be a great learning experience for everyone especially as we prepare to openly safe our doors very soon for the kids this summer. And to bring us as professionals in the movement closer than ever before. With the conference being virtual this year, we were able to expand our reach and we are thrilled that some of our fellow club professionals from all over Texas and even a few from out of states could join us today. Here are a few virtual housekeeping items to keep in mind, please. Make sure you're on mute throughout the presentation to avoid any background noise or distractions. We ask that you keep your camera off unless during a breakout session or at the speaker's request. Number two, please be sure to rename your Zoom participant name to your first and last name or if you're in a group setting, the name of your club. Number three, throughout the presentations, please feel free to ask questions using the chat box only. They will be monitored throughout the presentation by a conference committee member and our presenters will have a chance to answer them accordingly. Today's sessions are going to be just as informative and awesome as yesterday's sessions. Today's sessions include high yield learning activities, self care, it's okay not to be okay. Our TPA awards rec recognition awards followed by lunch, then back to virtual programming best practices, and we end the day with sensational summer programming during COVID time. Normally, we host this conference in person we host a social gathering to build camaraderie and networking opportunities, and even dress up for our awards dinner to recognize some of the outstanding staff within our clubs. Yesterday, we had our virtual luau, and we'd like to thank the Boys and Girls Club Mission, Rick and Kayla, for hosting it, and DJ Nemesis for keeping us dancing in our seats when we weren't, and when we weren't playing games uh, to win gift cards and drawing names for raffle items. If you weren't there, we missed you and you had a chance to win, but you still have a chance to win more prizes today. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our first presenter, Ms. Julie Duby. Ms. Duby is currently the unit director for the Boys and Girls Club of Hartford, Connecticut at Trinity College. She's been a part of the movement for over 14 years. As a club alumni of the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Nashua in Nashua, New Hampshire, she is passionate about providing opportunities and impacting members and their families like she once received. Miss Julie is enthusiastic in facilitating professional development to club professionals as a tier two and youth methods trainer, including creating and developing her own trainings around on the spot fun. She obtained her undergraduate degree from the University of Massachusetts Amherst and a master's degree in business administration with a concentration in project management through the University of Phoenix. Join me now welcoming Miss Julie Duby. Yay. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Let me just get my um, PowerPoint set up for you guys. I am so excited to be here with you today. I wish we could be in person, but we are going to still have a great training today. So let me just get started here. Okay, so as mentioned this morning, we are going to start with our high yield activity session. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Um, we are going to be starting um, with a nice icebreaker. Um, so what we are going to do for our icebreaker is in, in a minute or so, we are going to be put into breakout sessions. Um, and in that breakout room that you go into, if you can please share your name and what club you're from and what your position is. But the biggest question that I would like you to share with your group is if you were, if you were a potato, how would you like to be cooked and why? And I can write that in the chat as well. If you were a potato, how would you wanna be cooked and why? And that's after you introduce yourself, um, say what club you're from and what position you have at your club. So we're gonna be put into breakout rooms um, in a minute to do that. All right, um, and how long will they be in the, will everybody be in the breakout rooms? Five minutes? It's five minutes, thank you, Rachel. Okay, all right. So give me one more. Okay, everyone should be going to the breakout rooms. Perfect, thank you so much. All right. I think we're ready to keep going. Great. I am actually. Well, welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed getting to know each other. Um, so that was a community builder. And the purpose of that was for you guys to meet each other and start building a learning community. Um, there's a lot of different community builders from name games, different icebreakers. Um, and there's a lot of different resources um, that you can use in order to um, get some of those. Um, one of those resources is the YD Toolbox. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you guys have heard about the YD Toolbox? Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs up. If you don't know about it, it is an app that has um, a lot of different activities um, such as community builders and you can download it right off the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. So um, community builders, uh, some of them are name games. Can uh, somebody either unmute themselves and tell me about their favorite name game or let me know in the chat their favorite name game that they've used? A little yeah. Croatian game. Oh. You say your name and act out your favorite hobby. It's it's your volume is really low, but I think I heard you ask a name and your favorite hobby. Is that right? That's a great one. Thank you for sharing. Was there someone else that wanted to share? I see some in the chat. We have um, name in motion, um, find someone with two letters, the same as your name. I like that one, Nancy. Name in motion, that's always a good one. Yeah, 
So you guys, you guys know your name games there. Um, if, if you were to make an adaptation to what we just did with the potato question, what would you do to make it fun for your members? What question would you ask instead? You can either unmute or share in the chat. I see some more, you say your city with your initials. I like that one too. What are some good icebreaker questions like the one that I asked today that you could ask with your kids? How do you cook rice in your family? Absolutely, I think that's a great one. You can learn about everybody's culture. If you were a dinosaur, what would you be? If you were a fish, which type would you be? Yeah, those are great ones. Three things we don't know about you. If you're an animal, what would you be and why? Absolutely, those are great ones. Thank you guys for sharing those. So we're gonna talk about um, our active engagements today. They were already brought up at the beginning, but um, just to reiterate, we're gonna be open, honest, and candid. We're gonna be respectful. We're gonna have one conversation at a time. Um, we are on time because we're here virtually. Um, if you have to take care of yourself, take a phone call, do things like that, please feel free to do so. And we wanna have fun. And then also we wanna be engaged. So if um, you know we're using reactions when appropriate, we're using uh, chat, we're turning our camera on if we're in a breakout room, we're unmuting ourselves if um, we're talking and then we're keeping ourselves on mute otherwise. Is there anything else that we wanna to add to these active engagement? All right. So the goal of today's session is for us to increase our club's impact on members' academic success, good character and citizenship and our healthy lifestyles which is our three priority outcomes. Oops. So by completing this session, you'll be able to create an implementation plan to facilitate high yield activities to contribute to the outcome driven club experience for youth, which we're gonna talk about more. The learning objectives during the session, you'll be able to recognize the differences between targeted programs and high yield activities. You'll be able to demonstrate your ability to apply the elements of a high yield quality sessions and the da da technique, which is one of my favorite techniques, to do high yield activities, and we'll learn what da da stands for. We're going to be able to create an implementation implementation plan to facilitate age appropriate high yield learning activities. So we are going to do a high yield activity, and this activity is called A to Z Healthy Me. So what I need everyone to do is either open a Word document or get a piece of paper and a writing utensil. So I'm gonna give you just a second to make sure you have that. If you can give me a thumbs up when you're ready with either or. Okay, I see some thumbs up. Okay, so what we're going to do is, and you can't start yet, no cheating. But when I say go, um, we are going to name as many vegetables and fruits in the order of the al alphabet as you can in the timed amount of time that we have. So I'm not gonna do fruits and vegetables, but for example, if I was to do it with car makes and models, my A would be Acura, my B would be a Buick, my C would be Chevrolet, and I would keep going. You cannot skip letters, so you have to go in order A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And the goal is to get as far down or to complete the alphabet, as far down as you can in the alphabet or to complete the whole alphabet. And I wanna see how far you can get. It's gonna be timed. I'm gonna give two minutes for you to come up with as many as you can in the alphabet. Fruits or vegetables, A through Z. 
What questions do you guys have? So if there is no questions, feel free to unmute yourself if there is. If there's no questions, the time will start. Oh, I'm getting my stopwatch out. The time will start right now. I see some collective uh, teamwork happening in the chat. That's wonderful. You have one minute remaining. Thirty seconds. Fifteen seconds. Time's up, pencils down, hands off the keyboard. Now, who got through the whole alphabet? Is there anybody? If you did get through the whole alphabet, please unmute yourself and tell me or tell me in the chat. Anybody? Did anyone get close to the end? We got to six left. Six left? Did anyone do better than six left? Oh, someone got stuck on J. Whoever got um, the six left, can you guys read us the, the fruits and vegetables you came up with? Okay, we have A for apple, B for broccoli, C for carrots, D for dates, cabbage, figs, grapes, honeydew, iceberg, jackfruit, jackfruit, kale, lemon, melon, nectarines, orange, pineapple, kumquats, radish, squash, and turnips. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. That was awesome. So let me ask everybody, and you can put in the chat or unmute yourself, what rules or conditions that could we change in order to enhance that game or make it more fun? We could do superheroes. Could do superheroes. They could do favorite music games that they like to play. Right. They can even go as far as family games or animals. Yep. Splitting up groups. Yep. Uh, include the color, change the topics, as you mentioned. Absolutely. Right. Using letters of their name as veggies or fruit. Yep. Cities and states, scavenger hunt. Yep, you guys have great ideas. Absolutely, the ways that you could adapt that. And it's hard on virtual because we're from person, it could be it could be a little bit different as well too. 
So let me ask you, did when I gave instructions, did I describe the goal and rules of the game? Give me a thumbs up if I did that. I see some yeses, okay. Did I demonstrate it or practice it? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, I see some yeses. Did I ask for questions? Okay, I see some yeses. Did we talk about how we could adapt? Oh, did we do it? We did it, right? Everybody participated. What about, did we talk about how to adapt it? We just did that, right? So those are the steps of the DADA technique. So when you're, when you're giving instructions for an activity, a high yield activity or any other activity with our youth at our clubs, you wanna use the DADA technique. So the first thing that you wanna do is describe it what the purpose is, what the goal is, and what the rules of the game are. The second thing is, is demonstrate it. So you wanna show what it looks like. Then you wanna ask for questions. You wanna do the game or activity and then adapt it if necessary, or to ask how it could be better or fun with your members. So we're gonna have time later for you guys to practice this technique. The game that we just played right now um, is actually, or the high yield activity that we just learned, we just did, is a standalone high yield activity because it's not part of a targeted program. However, it could be incorporated into a targeted program. What program do we run that it could be incorporated into? You can share in the chat. What program could A to Z Healthy Me be incorporated into? Healthy habits, games or gym, anywhere really? Yeah, because it is a standalone, absolutely. But for a targeted program, we could probably fit into our healthy habits program or something similar, right? Outside, mm -hmm. if you have a gardening program, it could be incorporated to that, right? So what I want you guys to do is I'd like you um, on your own to do some reflection questions. So the reflection questions are up on the presentation. So the first one is, what were you feeling as you played A through Z Healthy Me? We didn't play BuzzFizz. We played A through Z Healthy Me. How are you feeling? Do you think club members would enjoy that game? Why or why not? Why is it important to use the DADA technique when facilitating activities? And how might following the DADA technique whenever you facilitate activities increase, increase youth, young people's level of engagement? We're gonna write it before we talk because we are gonna share out some of our thoughts and that's the W-I-B-Y-T. What questions do you have? And we're going to take about three minutes for that.
All right, about one minute left. All right, we are going to come back together. Um, I did uh, send out in the chat the participants guide. You're welcome to open that up um, and or print it out at your club um, in order to follow along with some of the activities such as this one where you can write in it. And so um, I wanted to get some volunteers so I want to share some of their thoughts with their reflection. So is there anyone that would like to share? You can either unmute or share in the chat. What were, what were you feeling as you played the A through Z healthy me? So we're here at Central in Wichita Falls. And for the first question, a lot of our people said it was challenging, a little stressful, okay, um, but it was fun. Uh, the second question, they said that it, would the kids would enjoy it um it gives them that rush that fun little rush that little kids have um it's a good team builder and again it's challenging for them and then the third answer question was it challenges their minds to think more uh it helps them understand different situations their brain function um confidence word association um, how to process situations, competitiveness. Those are just some of the things that in the real world they'll be challenged with and games like this will help them with that. Sure. Thank you for sharing. Can someone else share with me um, number three, why is it important to use the dot dot technique when facilitating activities? Hi, um, America from the Boys and Girls Club of Far here. Um, I think it's important because you have to explain what you're expecting and the reason why you're playing that certain game or doing that activity with the kids. Mm -hmm. And just so they can get an idea of, oh, this is what we're gonna do and it's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. Definitely, thank you for sharing. I see in the, in the chat that it's the instructions. Absolutely. What about um, number four? How might following the dot dot technique uh, whenever you facilitate activities increase young people's level of engagement? It shows you're prepared. That's a good one. What else? It's fun when you know what you're doing. Good point. All right, let's get into high yield activities and what they are. So high yield activities are your fun with a purpose, enjoyable experiences that are hands-on, interactive, and to help en enhance the club experience. They motivate members to explore, develop, create, and learn. When done well, they remove all division between learning and playing. They help extend members learning beyond the regular school day and develop into enthusiastic, self-directed, lifelong learners. They help support our three priority outcome areas. 
They can be standalone in their own activity, or they can be part of a scheduled session you already have, or part of a targeted program session. And why are they important? Plenty of research show, tells us that youth need high yield activities. Other activities that we do in the club, they may be to help uh, youth engage in play or fitness or something like that. But high yield activities, they help members achieve one or more of the three priority outcomes that we want them to achieve. Um, so this is our formula for impact. It is the equation that we follow for our clubs where we take our young people who need us most, those are our club members. We give them the outcome-driven club experience, which includes the five key elements for positive youth development, high yield activities, targeted programs, and regular attendance. We'll get in more depth of that. And we hope to get our priority outcomes, which is academic success, good character and citizenship, and healthy lifestyles. So our five key elements for positive youth development. Can anyone give me a thumbs up if they've heard about these before? Okay, give me some thumbs up. Well, if you haven't, it is A-OK. -okay. We're gonna learn about them. So these are five key elements that we want to incorporate into our uh, club experience. The number one is creating a safe and positive environment. And that looks like club staff, facilities, program offerings, and age appropriate uh, settings uh, create stability, consistency, and a sense of physical and emotional safety for members. The club provides structure and clearly defines acceptable behaviors. Then we want to generate fun and foster a sense of belonging. Clubs generate fun for members. Members develop a strong sense of belonging through the connections they establish with staff and peers. Staff members make the club feel like home, fostering a family atmosphere and creating a sense of ownership for members. We wanna encourage supportive relationships with peers and adults. Club youth develop meaningful relationships with peers and adults. Staff members actively cultivate such relationships to ensure that every member feels connected to one or more peer or adult. Staff members demonstrate warmth, caring, appreciation, acceptance, and proper guidance in their interactions with members. We wanna provide opportunities and expectations. So club youth can acquire physical, social, technological, artistic, and life skills. Clubs encourage members to develop moral character and behave ethically. Staff members establish and reinforce high expectations and help young people do well in school and pursue a post-secondary education. And we wanna offer recognition. Clubs recognize and affirm young people's self-worth and accomplishments. Staff members encourage youth and provide positive reinforcement as they make improvements and experience successes. The club showcases young people's achievements. When implemented consistently and intentionally, the first of your outcome-driven club experience components unlocks the other three components. Young people will get the most out of our targeted programs and high yield activities and attend your club more often when they experience the five key elements for positive youth development. They are the vehicle to build our relationships and trust with youth in order to engage youth and deepen their participation. And they create the indicators that measure how members perceive a high quality club experience through the NYOI, the National Youth Outcome Survey. So our targeted programs, can anyone share with me a targeted program that they run at their club? targeted program. Summer brain game. Yep. That's definitely one. Anybody else? Positive action. 
Yep. What else? Start Smart. Yep, that's another one for sure. So targeted programs are sequenced learning experiences with specific objectives for building skills and knowledge. They help youth acquire useful knowledge and building skills. They help youth avoid, cope with, or overcome risks and challenges that are prevalent in our society. Are targeted to help youth achieve positive outcomes in one or more of the three priority outcomes and are organized into five program core areas. Someone said all the national programs, and that's absolutely correct. So your Torch Club, your Keystone, your College and Career Center programs, Healthy Habits, Smart Girls, Passport, all of those are targeted programs. So all of our targeted programs um, are in one of these core program areas or sometimes in multiple. Um, so our programs are in these areas of leadership and service, which would be like our Torch Club, our Keystone, our Youth of the Year programs, our education, which there's plenty, DIY STEM, Power Hour, um, uh, Summer Brain Game, things like that. We have the arts, we have sports and recreation, and health and wellness. So effective targeted programs have the following attributes. They are planned. They are designed to achieve stated goals and objectives in a core program area, which we just learned about. They're designed to build upon existing knowledge and skills. They're conducted for a specific audience. They're sequenced, meaning they are conducted over a specific period of time using multiple lessons in a certain order. They use specific delivery methods and they measure and evaluate the extent participants achieve goals and objectives. Our regular attendance part of the Outcome Driven Club experience consists of three indicators. Our annual visit, so how many times in a year a member comes to the club. Your average daily attendance, so how many kids on an average day come to your club. And retention or renewal, so how the tenure of our members, so are they coming year over year. In order to deepen our impact for youth to attend the club more often over a longer period of time, the magic number is at least 52 times a year. So it's like once a week. Um, and it really isn't, we can't really see the positive impact that the club has until about a year. Um, that's why for our National Youth Outcome Initiative survey, um, you usually have kids that are, they've been a member or more. Um, and regular attendance is increased when youth have a voice, choice, and autonomy, especially retaining members through their critical teen years or even pre-teen pre years. So if we give them our, our five key elements for positive youth development, they come on a regular basis, we provide targeted programs, we will we hope to achieve these three priority outcomes. So academic success, we want our members to graduate on time. We want them to be motivated to learn with a plan to succeed in today's workforce, whether that be college, military, employment, um, or trade school. We want them to have good character and citizenship. So we want them to develop strong character and take actions that make a difference in the community. We want them to to have healthy lifestyles, so make healthy lifestyle decisions resulting in social, emotional, and physical well-being. So to go back to this right here, for high yield learning, well, high yield activities, there are only some, the difference between targeted programs and high yield learning activities only some of these things have to happen for a high yield activity. So if you believe, I'm gonna read the statements again. If you believe a high yield activity needs that statement, give me a thumbs up. 
So our high yield activities planned. Thumbs up if you think high yield activities are planned. I see some yeses, okay. Okay, good. Are high yield activities designed to achieve a stated goal or objective? I see some yeses, great. Do high yield activities have to be designed to build upon existing knowledge and skills? I see some no's, that's actually correct. So high yield activities do not have to be designed to build upon skills, prior knowledge and skills. Are they conducted for a specific audience? I see some yeses. That's right. So they are conducted for a specific audience. Are they in sequential order or conducted over a spe specific period of time using multiple lessons? No, they do not have to be that. That's right. Do they use specific delivery methods? Yes, so we talked about the DADA -da method, right? Do they measure and evaluate the extent of which participants achieve goals and objectives? So I see some yeses, but they actually do not. So a high yield activity does not need to measure and evaluate the extent participants achieve goals and objectives. But that's the difference between our targeted programs and our high yield activities. So for high yield activities, there's three types that we can do at our club. So we can either implement them with targeted program sessions. So for example, the A through Z Healthy Me could be an activity that we do during healthy habits. They can be independent scheduled sessions, so they can be done whenever throughout the day. They don't have to be within a targeted program time. Um, or it could be something that's not, um, you know, every week. And they can also just be a standalone fun activity that you do. To be most effective, high yield activities need to appeal to members' interests and desire to play. They need to be based on youth's voice and choice. They need to be varied and have an element of surprise. They need to sometimes include friendly competition. So we could have easily turned the A through Z healthy me into some type of um, relay race or an incentive at the end or something like that. Um, they need to be facilitated using the dot dot technique as we talked about. So in addition to that, we also need to make sure that when we are planning a high quality session that we incorporate these elements into the high quality session. So First, we need to do our planning. And as we discussed, high yield activities need to be planned. They need to be planned well in advance so that you're prepared. Um, you can use a lot of different resources. There is plenty of resources on bgca.net. Um, you can also use your back pocket hints if you have that, which is also available in bgca.net, or you could use um, your YD toolbox. And sessions are defined as all the activities that occur during, during a standard block of time in your club program and in a particular space. They also need to incorporate, your high quality session need to incorporate a, a warm welcome. 
So when facilitating a high yield activity or standalone session, should members be greeted warmly? Yes or no? Of course, yes, 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 yes. They also should include some type of community builder. So that could be a name game if they're new to each other. It could be some type of icebreaker. It could be an icebreaker question. Um, there's plenty of icebreakers out there. Um, should we always create a climate, a climate where members feel a part of the group? Right, yes. So minimally during our high yield activity standalones, when members don't know each other's names, a short name game should be played. If the high yield activity requires subgroups or teams, then a grouper. So when you break uh, groups into smaller groups, um, you could do that. Um, during sessions, more than one community builder can be used as well. Then the next section, section of our elements of a high quality session is our group agreements. Does everyone know what group agreements are? So group agreements should be um, agreed upon the whole group of how they want their session to go. So whether it be, you know, one person talk at a time, make sure you have fun, what, whatever it may be, but it should be agreed upon with the group. And while high yield activity sessions require full group agreements, during high yield standalones, members minimally just need a brief re review of previous agreements and or the club rules or conduct. So it could be either or. Then we have our main activity. That's, that's the actual activity that you're going to be doing. Um, that During high yield activity sessions, there may be one main high yield activity that would be considered the main activity or a series of high yield activities. During a standalone high yield activity, there's only one main activity. Then you have your reflection. So normally reflection could be, you know, writing about what you learned for the day or, or things like that. But when we're doing the Dada method for high yield activities, the adapting part of it is more of the reflection part. Then we have our recognition. So informal recognition needs to be provided at the end of both high yield activity standalones and sessions. Formal recognition may be provided when the same members participate in a session over an extended period of time. And then you have your closing and transition. So just like the warm welcome, all high yield activities need a positive closing and transition. So we're gonna do an exercise based off of these elements of high quality sessions. And I'm gonna send again the file for the participants guide because you will need this. I'm gonna send it in the chat. Like I said, feel free to open it up, um, print it out, use it on your computer, whatever works best for you. So this exercise provides you an opportunity uh, to practice facilitating the elements of a high quality session. First, what you're going to do is you need to open up that participants guide and you need to read the portion that says planning. It's on page 14. And I will write that, read page 14. And then the second part of this exercise is going to be, you are going to plan something for six to nine year old members. And I will write this all in the chat for you as well. You're going to plan something that will last between one and five minutes for a group of six to nine year old members. And you just need to pick one element of the high quality session. So everyone will read about planning on page 14 
Then you will use between pages 15 and 18, which talk about all the different um, parts of the, of the high quality session. And I want you to plan something for a group of six to nine year olds. For example, if you pick warm welcome, you would plan out something one to five minutes that would be a warm welcome for six to nine year olds. If you plan, if you pick main activity, then you would plan something for six to nine year olds for the main activity, a high yield activity. So something where it's fun with learning. And I'm gonna write this all, I'm gonna write this all in the chat for you. And we are going to do this individually, or if you are in a group at your club, you can work together. That is no problem. We're going to have a good amount of time for this. Um, probably, we're gonna start with 15 minutes and see where everybody is at after 15 minutes, but I'm going to put all the instructions again in the chat. With that, what questions do you have? If you do not have questions for me, you can get started. I am typing the instructions again in the chat for you. And Rachel, if we can put some music just for some background noise, that would be great. Right, so I am going to be asking for some volunteers. We are going to try and get through um, volunteers for each element um, of the high quality session. Do I have any brave volunteers that would like to start off with what they came up with for their warm welcome for our six to nine year olds? This Feel is. Boys and Girls Club, which top follows, we'll start up with a warm wipe, warm up. Oh, sorry, we're doing warm up. Never mind. Warm welcome. No, the warm up. Warm up. Okay. Yeah, the warm welcome. Warm welcome. Okay, go ahead. So we came up with the game. Um, it's the personalized handshake. So. The way we describe it is let them know we're going to put you in groups of two. You get to pick a partner and you're going to take one minute to come up with a personalized handshake. Once you come up with your handshake, we're going to show everybody and you're going to demonstrate it for us. So once they come up with their handshake, we're going to put them in groups. We're going to let them do their handshake, tell them they have about one minute. Once they get it figured out and their one minute is up, we're going to ask them or we told them how to do it. We're going to ask them if they have questions. Then we're going to let them do it. Um, once they do it, we're going to ask them, you know, what kind of skills does that, what kind of things does that help them learn? Um, some of the things that can help them learn is it teaches them team building, communication, 
uh, it puts a bond between them by doing the warm up, mm -hmm. listening skills, critical thinking, coordination, and how to use their time. So since they only have one minute to do it, it uses their time. So we have our, our data, which is, we described it, we demonstrated it, we asked for questions, we let them do it. And then if we need to adapt anything to it, they can adapt and change it any way they need to. Excellent, I love it. So I think that's great. You know why too? Because um, when you do future sessions with that same group, you could use that as a warm welcome every time because everyone will have their handshakes if you have that exact same group. So it makes everyone feel like a part of the group. So absolutely great job, love it. Thank you for sharing. Would somebody like to tell us what they came up with for a community builder? Which actually that last one could be a community builder as well too. Brave volunteers for a community builder for our six to nine year olds. If you didn't work on that one, if you have a suggestion too, that works too. Edinburgh would like to go. All right, so uh, so the community builder that we came up with is called uh, I Love My Neighbor Who. Uh, so it's a very fun game. Uh, it's very quick. You can do it within the one to five minute range. Um, so how it works is uh, you have your class circle up. Uh, right now with the current regulations and stuff, you can have them space out a little bit more in a larger area, uh, like in the gym or outside. So it's kind of like musical chairs, but standing up and everybody gets to participate. No one gets out of the game, you could say. Uh, so everybody circles around or makes a giant circle with one member in the middle. And the member makes a state, the member in the middle makes a statement saying, I love my neighbor who, and then they make a statement like loves pizza. So whoever in the circle loves pizza then has to switch a spot with somebody else that does. And you can't switch like a spot right next to you or to down from you. You know, you have to like move across the circle and stuff like that. Uh, but it's a pretty fun game to play because you, instead of asking direct questions, you're just ask, making a statement and you're finding out um, who from that group or who in that classroom likes certain things. So who likes pizza, who likes the color black, who likes rock music and stuff like that, you know? So it's a, it's a pretty fun game, it's very quick and it's pretty much no material that you need. So, yep, that's our yep. community goal. Thank you for sharing, that's an excellent one. And I think it goes by a lot of different names. I've heard um, uh, like blow, blow the, the, the wind blows or there's a couple other names for that one, but I like, um, I, I love my neighbor who, I love that. Thank you again. Um, what about group agreements? Who has some ideas around group agreements for our six to nine year olds and how they would present that? And if you didn't work on it, feel free to just share your thoughts. Come on, brave volunteer, come on. How, we, how could we do our group agreements with six to nine year olds? If you're being a little shy, you can write in the chat too. We can give them choices. Choices are good. Choices are good. How would you give them choices for group agreements? Ooh, I like that. Group agreements, you can make a song with expectations. 
I like that a lot. And our 69 year olds would, would love that. Go ahead. Someone was talking. Go ahead. Choices like a, as a group and then letting them vote upon it so that they have the ultimate say in what it is that they're doing. I like it. That's a great way to do group agreements. Uh, ask them what rules they want. Yep. Have them come together and come with class and gym rules for the club. Yes, absolutely. Come have them come up with those. Absolutely. All right. So you guys have the idea for that. What about the main activity? Did anyone attempt the main activity? It was called as if. Or does anyone want to attempt to do it with us? So if you haven't, take a look on page 23. That's where the as if one, as if activity is. Is there any brave volunteer that would like to use the da da technique to, to facilitate the as if with all of us? You can show us on the video at your club if you have a group there. Anybody? It's actually on page 20, not 23. Page 20. So if you guys can all go to page 20 in the participants guide and tell me your thoughts in the chat or out loud if you think your six to nine year olds would like this activity. You can give me a thumbs up, you can say yes in the chat. I see, don't have the guide available. Did you get the file in the chat? I'm sending it again, just in case. And Rachel sent it again as well. So basically it's, a, it's an activity where um, the leader, so whether it be an adult or one of your, your youth, um, can create their own sentences with physical activity that attaches to it. And then the participants act out, act out the sentences for approximately 20 to 30 seconds each. So some of the examples are, run in place as if a big scary bear is chasing you, or walk forward as you're walking through chocolate pudding, or jump in place as if you're popping pop, your, your popcorn popping reach up as in grabbing balloons out of the air, march in place and play the drums as if you are marching in a band and it goes on. And then you can have kids also come up with um, their own sentences as well. I see the kiddos would love that. That's great. That's great. 
So hopefully after this session, if you were to use that activity, you'll be able to use the dot dot method in order to implement that. Did anyone take on the reflection piece that wants to share? I agree, it's a fun and active activity, yes. Why is reflection important? It lets you know that the kids understood exactly what it was they were doing and what you were trying to accomplish within the activity. Absolutely, thank you, absolutely. What about um, recognition? How could we do recognition if we facilitated that activity? Do a shout out. Shout out. Yep. So we can have the kids recognize each other for their achievements. You could have them recognize each other. Yep. Absolutely. Love that. Anybody else thoughts? Recognition? Why is it important? Why is recognition important to our members? Why is it important we provide recognition? Recognize them for participating, yeah it will make them uh, want to participate more, absolutely. To make them feel like they belong, yep. Make them feel like they're good at something, right? Make them feel like they learned something, especially with high yield activities, because learning is part of it. Yep, so you guys got it. What about closing and transition? Why is a closing and transition important? It'll give them a cool down moment so that they have time to get ready for their next class so they're not too chaotic in the transition from one room to the next. Yep, absolutely. And it's good to just like you want your warm welcome, you kind of want like a warm exit, right? You want to have a positive ending as well, right? So they can apply what they learned in the next program. That's a good thought too, definitely. So with us sharing all of these things, we're going to do a quick reflection. Um, it's on pages. I'm going to copy and paste the, the questions just in case. Um, but they are on page 20 through 20 through 22 in the participants guide. There is a couple questions per each element. I just need you to pick one element that you did not work on. So if you did warm welcome, don't pick warm welcome. But just answer the questions for a different element. So I'm going to start copying and pasting. We're going to have about two to three minutes to complete these. A warm welcome is up. Again, you only have to pick one section, two to three minutes.
and we're going to stick with those three. All right, we should be finishing up. All right, we're going to all come back now. So we're going to do another activity on our own, or you can work in your group at your club. And what I'd like you to do is I would like you to pick an age group, a core program area, and a priority outcome area to work within. And you're going to create a high yield activity that you can implement. You want to name the activity, and you want to think about how you will incorporate the dot dot technique and incorporate the elements of a high quality session. I'm gonna write that again in the chat. And I will also give you the page numbers to reference the DADA method, the core program areas and the priority outcome area. So you're gonna create your own high yield activity, but you're going to pick 
what you're going to focus on. So what core program area, what outcome do you want, what age group, you're going to name it. And when we come back, I'm going to ask for a few volunteers to share what they came up with. The instructions are in there and I will let you know the pages as well. We are going to take about 10 minutes for this. All right, everybody, I would love to have some volunteers share the name of their activity and just give us a synopsis of what your activity would be that you came up with. And you can either share it in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Hey, Julie, this is Kayla with the El Campo Club. Hello. Hey, so we came up with a game for six to nine year olds. Um, and it would start by playing cluster to get them into groups um, where you can name off numbers, get in a group of two, get in a group of four until you get your desired numbers in the groups. And then after that, we would play a game called Indy 500, where that group of kids, you'd say, okay, you're your trucks and your issue is you have a flat tire so you have to hop on one foot. The next group would be race cars. Okay, you have a bad engine so you have to crab walk. And so when you say, when you call trucks, they all have to hop on one foot around the court until they get back to the starting line. Mm -hmm. That would just be kind of a quick grouper and get them interactive before doing a targeted program. Yep. Did you have a, a high yield activity with that one? Or was that you you got to the, the beginning, the grouper and the, um, the community builder? Uh, that was all we had was the grouper okay. and the community builder. That's, but those are great starting points to get your activity started. So I love those. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? I'm sure we have lots of creativity flowing. You could type it in the chat too. We got Robo Cycle for ages nine to 12 in the arts and crafts. Members would make a robot out of recycled material. Love it. Love it. What else we got? So this is Crystal over at Central in Wichita Falls. Hi, Crystal. And we came up with the game called The Blob. And it is based around our preteens, so 10 to 12 year olds, and it's held in the gym. Mm -hmm. And we use the Dada effect on it. So our planning, we did the planning for it. Um, a warm welcome when they come in, just let them do our, our handshake game, let them get themselves warmed up. Mm -hmm. Didn't think of really the community builder part, skipped on that one. Uh, our group agreement is that they will listen, pay attention, and they will be careful when they do their activity. They'll take it slow and keep their distance because of the whole COVID thing. Yep. Uh, our main activity, we described what our main activity is to them. So we use the data. We described it, which is basically there's four groups, uh, three groups with two to three people in each group. And they have certain colors on. Each group has a different color. And instead of holding hands, which is what you would normally do, they're going to hold the ends of their little flags. And they're going to be in different areas. And then the, 
Fourth group is individuals. So they're gonna be all over the gym floor. And when they come in, the blobs, which are the groups, have to run towards the individuals and try to capture them to make them part of their blob. If you get tagged, you're part of the blob. But if the individual breaks you off from the blob, you are now an individual. So you have to be careful. They have to pay attention to what they're doing. So they have to work as a group. They have to uh, move as a group. So they have to think strategic and things like that. Um, we described it to them. We asked them if they have any questions. We demonstrated it. We did the activity. And if for some reason it wasn't working out that well, we would adapt it to where it's either everybody kind of try to, you know, tag everybody or however we can do it to make our blobs bigger. At the end, we do our reflection, which of course we'd ask them what, what, how, what were the challenging parts in this game and how did it make them think? We'd recognize the groups that won, if there was any big groups. And then we do our closing transaction, something to calm them down, to get them ready, clean up their areas, pick up their flags and things like that. Wonderful. What, what core program area or priority outcome would you say that that goes under? I really didn't think about that. <laughs> It, in, in my head, I was thinking about science and cells and things like that when you were describing it. Yeah, that could, yeah, that would work. Science Just the, uh, is a different organ, that like organisms and things. Yep. To... yep, exactly. I think I might have lost you for a second. Sorry. You well, thank you. Uh, sorry, I think you're cutting in and out. I don't want to interrupt. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for sharing your creative idea. Um, just, a, just a reminder that for our high yield activities, we do want to have some type of learning, even though it's a lot of fun. So when you're planning your activities, just make sure you know what, you know, what that priority outcome area or that goal you have in mind. Like the blob one, I love that for the organism stuff. So that's great. And electrons, thank you for sharing that. Uh, molecules, yep, exactly. And that can be part of your, you know, the reflection or when you introduce it, like we're going to learn about science, but we're going to play a game um, and then talk about it after. So wonderful planning. Thank you to all the volunteers that have shared. You guys definitely have a lot of creative juices flowing. Love it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to think about how we're going to implement when we go back to our clubs and put this into practice. So I have two questions. I'm going to put them in the chat. I just like you to think about them. Um, you can answer them in the chat. Um, and in about a minute, I'm going to ask for just a few volunteers to share. So the, the two questions are going to be, what will you do to ensure you implement the element, elements of a high quality session when facilitating high yield activities at your club? And what will you do to ensure that you use the da da technique when facilitating high yield activities? So take a minute, think about that. You can write it in the chat, the answers, or just think to yourself, I'm gonna ask for a few volunteers. So thinking about that, is there anyone that wants to share, what will you do at your club to ensure you implement the elements of a high quality session when facilitating high yield activities? Okay, so one of our guys came up with an idea. He would do the SOP, which is basically his own standard operating procedure. 
So basically he would make his own SOP for the Dada effect to keep in his room so he can describe it to his kids. So they also know what it's, it's, it's all about. It's not just about us knowing what the acronym is and what to do with it, but making sure they understand that when we say, okay, we're going to do the Dada now, they understand what it is and they can help incorporate that as well. They can learn it. Excellent. I love that. And it will help them if they ever take the lead in an activity, if we put them in a lead that they know how to do it as well and lead the activity. So love that. Um, in the chat, I see uh, going, o going over it in staff meetings, planning prep sheets ahead of time and making sure to have materials, making posters for areas. Yes, those are all great ways to implement to make sure. Um, definitely sharing it with the staff is important, sharing it with the kids so that they know the process as well. That's, that's great. Awesome. All right, so we are now at the conclusion of this session. Uh, during this session, we have created implementation plan to facilitate a high yield activity to contribute to the outcome driven club experience for youth. We also recognize the differences between targeted programs and high yield activities and demonstrated our ability to apply the elements of a high quality session and da da technique to high yield activities. Before I leave you today for the rest of your day, I do want to do a quick reflection. So I'd like to know, put this in the chat for me, which of these four emojis do you feel you most identify with about facilitating high yield activities. A four would be, I can do this very well. I can explain this and teach it to others. And I can apply this in new ways. A three would be, I understand this. I can do this by myself. I can show what I know. A two would be, I am beginning to understand this with help. I'm making mistakes. I need more practice. Or a one, I don't understand this yet. I'm just beginning to learn this and I need help. Okay. Seeing lots of threes, that's excellent. And it is okay no matter where you are in there. I see some fours, that's great. Some threes. Central says four, excellent. 3.5, all right. Threes, so the average is about three, that's great. Well, with that, um, my time is up with all of you. Um, I hope you got something out of this session with high yield activities. Um, and the, if anything, learning about the DADA method and the, high, uh, the elements of a high quality session. Um, I enjoyed my time here with you today. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your training today. Okay. okay, I think um, Rocio or Valerie has come out. Thank you so much, Ms. Julie, for, for that session. And now we're going to go ahead and take a break. We're going to take a break for 10.45 to 11 o'clock, and then we'll be back at 11 o'clock.